hey guys welcome to the youtube channel if you're new here it's Ndagir. thanks for coming some people came to the instagram and were telling me on how i should talk about this issue but yeah i'm gonna say what i really need to say so let's talk about it so why are gambians participating so that's actually a good point that you make because there's a problem we have to sensitize the gambian communities a little bit more there's got to be a grassroots effort to educate the families because at the end of the day if a family is poor they're making a thousand dollars a month and all of a sudden this white european male or female comes with thousands of pounds thousands of dollars offer to take their child to europe give them a visa give them a better life they turn a blind eye and that is what the issue is and i think it starts with the young people as well because some of them know they're 18 they're 17 they're 16 they know what these people are coming here for but again it's the poverty at the same time though the hotels they can't turn a blind eye the policemen can't turn the blind eye and we got to make sure that everything is in in place so when these pedophiles or these dirty harrys that's what we call them dirty harrys back in the day these dirty harrys or dirty sarahs when they come to the gambia that they know that it's a no-nonsense policy let's provide people an idea of what sex tourism looks like right yeah um, Let's start about let's start with about Gambia. The Gambia is one of the top destinations for sex tourism in Africa. Mm -hmm. And the most common way in Gambia that we started seeing sex tourism before we even understood was termed by a group of men that we call bumpsters. Mm -hmm. yeah. For those who don't know, so <clears throat> bumpsters is typically a term for a group of men that are usually hanging around the beach, mm. you know, bars, restaurants, tourist areas, hanging around and they're just busy trying to chat to tourists, trying to show that they can show them around. Typically, these men, their whole purpose is to offer sexual services in exchange for money mm. or for them hitting the jackpot. And getting a ticket out. Getting a visa out. So how, how did it look like in Uganda? We didn't have what you would call bumpsters. Okay. Now, they still exist, right? There's still man them out there who said, oh, I met the love of my life. She's from Sweden. She's 77 years old. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, the, that existed. It wasn't as popular. The mm -hmm. more popular one was young women being approached by middle-aged or older white men. In Uganda, there's actually like very famous bars where, where someone who lives there will tell you, oh yeah, this bar, that's where like these men come to find these women. Right? Wow. What we're doing is, I think is spreading awareness to yeah. in our countries in Africa, sex tourism is not that trip to DR that guys do. <laughs> we have to absolutely condemn it and spread as much awareness to anyone, if you see certain types of events, you see an old white man with a young looking African girl or vice versa, to identify what that is. Mm. Do not think, oh, that is weird. No, no, no. It's no cougar business. Mm -hmm. Like what you're seeing is exploitation mm -hmm. and all of the negative effects to our society that's yeah. happening. So yeah. as a responsibility, it's important to identify and spread awareness to all our friends, all our non-Africans, yeah. that if you do go to our countries and you see those certain things, you know, just know what, the, what that means. Just know what it means, yeah. As you've seen in the video, this is something that has been really happening into the continent for a very, very long time. I mean, I found it there. A lot of us found it. And if you look into the history of us as Africans, colonization happened. And because of that, this is something that you cannot really avoid to happen. And that's why in the previous episodes, I made a video of Passport Bros where I was defending black men because on the internet, People are making it seem like it's black men who are being passport bros and they are being shitty, they are being horrible. But instead, the original passport bros have been and are white men, especially. So I was really taken back that it was kind of an attack to the black men because now they are doing it. And a lot of us are encouraging them to come into the continent and you know, interact with African women or African American women or black Americans or just European Africans, like all diaspora descendants of the continent to come and interact with the African people. So yeah, that's why I was so down to defend the passport bros at any cost. But still, in 2023, in 2022, or in the times of 2000s, I really don't want to blame a lot of white people at some sense because 
If you look in the videos, you clearly see these young men in Gambia consented and they knew what they were doing. They knew if they go to the beach, these women are going to be there and yeah, they will exchange situation together where there is money involved or visas involved or just sex as an agreement. This is where I want us as Africans to look into ourselves and stop looking outside of Africa or outside of our countries. Let me also go to my country, Uganda. You're going to see that when these men come, they know the places they need to go to because it's been happening and they have friends who have been into the continent so they know where they're going. But still, the women themselves or the men they consent to go to those places because they know if they go there they're going to get attention from these men or these women and also look into our governments because if we are living in countries where our government officials are not putting laws and implications that are restricting these kinds of people from coming into the continent and taking advantage of young girls or young men, then we are not going to progress as a group of people. We always want to blame. We are blaming white people or white men for coming into the continent, getting these girls. But we fully know if we had laws that were restricting them, it would not be happening. Also, we are living in countries where our leaders as well do not put things that really help its citizens to improve their lives. If there is a lot of poverty, if there is a lot of corruption, if there is a lot of these small, they're not even small, if there is a lot of these infrastructures that need to be fixed and they're not being fixed, then I'm pretty sure the citizens are going to look for all the necessary measurements to do to escape that kind of situation. And this is where this comes in. Young women want to have an easy way out and get these old men and yeah, of course, take them to Europe or America because they know you just have to sleep with them, they're gonna take you. Because that's the reality of it. I don't want to sugarcoat it. Also the men, they know if they get these women who are older, they are retired, they have money. Yeah, they are going to get them and take them if they can. And you're just going to be a sex toy because that's what is going to happen. We need to start reflecting as Africans and see that we are also being a problem. We are living in poverty. That poverty is not because we want to be in it, but because we also have leaders that are not putting structures to help us evolve. It's going to keep pushing young girls to go with these men and take advantage of them. But still, if the girls are doing it knowingly, I don't think it's now a white problem. A white man will know, a white woman will know, if I go with my dollar and my pound, I'll get this girl, I'll get this boy. And so we also know if I am here, I'm poor, I don't have anything, when I see this white man or this white woman, they'll give me money. And then I'll escape poverty, I'll escape my situations, I'll be able to go maybe abroad and help my family. So I'm not saying everybody does it for that, but the thing is, passport bros or sex tourism has not just started today, it's been happening, it happened through our ancestors where they were taken and raped and done all the evil things to them, and so it's been continuous. There's a big industry when it comes to that situation and it needs to be really voiced i wish people would really start talking about it because it's getting crazier every day if you come into uganda you're going to see how crazy it is it also goes to black men who travel not in a sense of looking for relationships but to just go and you know discover different girls from different african countries that is also a problem so it really needs a lot of voicing and yeah I just don't know what guys what do you really think about it how should we try to fight it is it really a white problem or it is an african problem that our governments need to really put a lot of restrictions on yeah that's really all i have to say about it tell me what you think we need to really be vigilant about it are you willing to see a girl who is young with an old man and try to maybe talk to police or act somehow or you're just going to ignore the situation and be like oh it's not my problem it's, it's, not, it's not my concern which might be but how are we going to work on it how are we going to solve it that is it for today guys i hope you like the video tell me what you really think comment and still 
please send me anything you want us to talk about i'll bring it here i'm willing to post every day guys like i want to challenge myself and post every single day until i'll feel like yes <laughs> yes i am consistent and if you've not subscribed please subscribe some of the channel yeah thank you and i'll see you in the next video bye